In this lecture, I want to talk about a very important theorem of probability theory, known as Bayes' theorem. Recall that the definition of conditional probability, so for example, for two formulas H and E, the probability of H given E is defined using this ratio. The probability of H given E is the probability of H and E divided by the probability of E, assuming, of course, that the probability of E is greater than zero. Bayes' theorem gives you an alternative way to calculate the probability of H given E. So here's the theorem. The probability of H given E is equal to the probability of E given H times the probability of H divided by the probability of E. So we can justify or prove this theorem just using the ratio definition. So the probability of H given E is the probability of H and E divided by the probability of E. Now what do we have on the right hand side? So on the right hand side, we have the probability of E and H divided by the probability of H. And this is multiplied by the probability of H divided by the probability of E. And now we can cancel. The probability of H cancels with the probability of H in the, the denominator. And we end up with the probability of E and H divided by the probability of E. But of course, the probability of E and H is equal to the probability of H and E. So on the left-hand side, we have the probability of H and E divided by the probability of E. And on the right-hand side, we have the probability of E and H divided by the probability of E. So these two numbers on both sides of the equation must always be equal. So this is the theorem. This is just a general fact about probabilities and about conditional probabilities. But it turns out to be incredibly useful. So Bayes' theorem is important because it expresses the quantity, the probability of H given E, which is typically something like the probability of a hypothesis H given some evidence E that you've observed. And this is typically something you find hard to assess in terms of quantities that can be drawn directly from experiential knowledge. So each of these quantities here can be are typically understood or you directly observe these quantities. So for example, as a kind of an intuitive example, suppose that you are in a casino and you hear a person at the next gambling table announce 12. So the person at this table just, you hear somebody yell 12. And we want to know whether he was rolling a pair of dice or a roulette wheel. That is, I want to know what is the probability that dice is true, so he was rolling a pair of dice, given that you heard him announce 12, you want to compare that with the probability that a roulette wheel was spun, given that you heard the announcement 12. Well, based on our background knowledge of gambling, this is just facts about gambling we know, that the probability that somebody would announce 12 given that they were rolling some dice, is going to be 1 out of 36. This is just a fact about rolling dice. Similarly, the probability that somebody would announce 12, given that they're spinning a roulette wheel, is going to be 1 out of 38. Also, we have been walking around the casino, so we have observations and we have prior information about what is the prior probability of, of rolling dice and what is the prior probability of rolling a roulette wheel. You have prior information about how many roulette wheels there are and how many games involve throwing dice. But that is exactly enough information in order for you to calculate these two probabilities. So here's a more uh, concrete example. Suppose that you select one card from a standard deck of cards. Now, let Q be the statement, the card is a queen. And let F be the statement, the card is a face card. So the question is, what is the probability of Q given F? 
So given that somebody tells you or you learn somehow that the card you drew is a face card, so a face card is either a jack, king, or queen, what is the probability that the card you're holding is in fact a queen? Well, one way to do this calculation is just to figure out what is the stochastic truth table. So here we have our two propositions, Q and F, and here's the Q and F, just for your information. Now, we need to figure out what are the probabilities of each of these four possibilities. So in order to calculate the probability of Q given F, I need to figure out what probability do I attach to each of these rows. Well, that's not completely straightforward, but um, to do the calculation, so how many ways can you get a queen and face card? Well, there are four queen face cards. There's a queen of hearts, a queen of diamonds, a queen of spades, and a queen of clubs. So there are four queen face cards out of a total of 52. How many cards are a queen but not a face? Well, there are none because a queen is in fact a face card. So there's a zero probability of getting a queen card that's also a face card. How many cards are not a queen but are a face card? Well, those are the jack and the king. So there are four jacks and four kings, so it's eight out of 52. And now we need to know how many cards are there that are not queen and not face cards. So that's the remaining cards. There are 40 out of 52 of them. Okay, so after you come up with these four probabilities here, you then need to do your calculation. What is the probability of Q given F? Well, that's the probability of Q and F divided by the probability of F. Well, here we see the probability of Q and F is true just on the top row. So that's 4 out of 52. Divided by the probability of F, which is true on the first and third row, so that's 12 out of 52, which is equal to 4 twelfths, which is equal to 1 third. So this is probably what you expected. But the, given that you learned that it's a face card, the probability that it's a queen is 1 third. But we can do this calculation without actually having to go through the trouble of finding the stochastic truth table. Why? Well, we know that if it's a queen card, if you learn that it's a queen card, then the probability that it's a face card must be one, because every queen card is, of course, a face card. We also know the prior probability of being a face card is 12 out of 52. There are 12 face cards out of a deck of 52. And there are four queen cards in a deck of 52. So this is enough information to determine what is the probability of Q given F. It's the probability using Bayes' theorem. It's the probability of F given Q times the probability of Q divided by the probability of F. So this is equal to 1, that's the probability of F given Q, times the probability of Q is 4 out of 52, and the probability of F is 12 out of 52, which is then going to be equal to 4 twelfths, which is equal to 1 third. So these two numbers are in fact the same. That's what we, we should expect. There's two ways of calculating what is the probability of Q given F. One using Bayes' theorem, the other using a stochastic truth table. So this coming up with the stochastic truth table was not such a big deal because there were only two atomic propositions, so there's only four rows. But in general, there might be lots of different possibilities or determining exactly what these probabilities are that you attach to each of these rows could, in turn, could, could be quite difficult. On the other hand, we typically will have some of this information. We will know what the probability of F is or the probability of Q and what the probability of F given Q is. In fact, we have terminology to refer to the different parts of Bayes' theorem. So we think of H as being some hypothesis that we're testing, and E is the evidence that we have received or observed. So the probability of H given E is known as the prior. This is the, pr uh, sorry, the posterior. This is the posterior probability of H after you observed your evidence. The probability of E given H, 
This is the likelihood of observing some, this, some piece of evidence given that your hypothesis is true. So the probability of E given H is typically called the likelihood. And the probability of H and the probability of E, this is your prior information. The probability of H is the prior probability of your hypothesis. And the probability of E is your prior probability of observing the evidence E. Now, one last comment about Bayes' theorem. So here is Bayes' theorem as I stated it. The probability, the posterior probability of H, given some evidence you observed, is the likelihood of observing that evidence times the ratio of the prior probability of H divided by the prior probability of observing your evidence E. Now, it's often quite difficult to figure out what is your prior probability of observing the evidence E. So there is an alternative way to calculate what is the prior of E. And that's using the law of total probability. Recall that the probability of E is actually equal to the probability of H times the probability of E given H plus the probability of not H times the probability of E given not H. So rather than having to directly observe the prior probability of observing some piece of evidence, all you need to know is the likelihood of observing the evidence given that your hypothesis is true and the likelihood of observing that evidence given that your hypothesis is not true. And then the only prior information you really need is the prior probability of H, which of course tells you what the prior probability of not H is. So this is the form of Bayes' theorem that is often used in practice. And that's just simply because you typically don't have access to the prior probability of the evidence E.